then we can get more CSH, more calcium silicate hydrates. How does it happen? When you are adding this one, CH, with some pozzolan, that is what that cement is called, Portland pozzolan or cement. I happen to be in Italy, this country, where the natural cement occurring, no? that place, Pozzoli. I visited the place, I found that cement, that is natural cement. That is what the Rome structures are so, this one, even it is without any problem it is intact. There is no, there, there is no, not much deterioration. So, uh, that is natural cement. That is what they call it as Portland Pozzolana. The Pozzolana name has come from there. Adding that, we will get additional CSH. So, CSH is increasing. This fellow is acting with the still a Pozzolan and we are getting additional CSH. Reducing the porous CH with the CSH, refining the pore structure ultimately. So, concrete is ingress of gases. Chloride or oxygen, fluoride or water or carbon dioxide, or whatever these things are there increase because of the porous nature, because of this calcium hydroxide. If you are eradicating, if you are ruining this calcium hydroxide by using a supplement material, then we may get good concrete, ultimate good concrete. That's what reduces the permeability of concrete. So, perm concrete permeability is very high, that can be considered to be reduced. We will get a good concrete. That's the thing. This uh, define ASTM. This standard defines Pozzolana. So, what is Pozzolana? Please read this uh, line. It is a siliceous or aluminosiliceous. See, I am just teaching, okay? I am not talking, I am teaching. Siliceous or aluminosiliceous. That is called, nothing other is called silica, SiO2 or Al2O3 SiO2. This composition we call it as Pozzolana. But that itself, players is having these two only. Pleias is having these two only, but these two as it is won't binding anything because we are working for binding material. They are not binding provided if you are adding with the any alkali or alkaline hydroxides, what I discussed something something back, calcium hydroxide. If the siliceous material is reacting with the calcium hydroxide, we will get at ordinary temperature because we don't give any other temperature to form or assist in the forming of cementitious properties. Ultimately, the siliceous or aluminous material reacting with the calcium hydroxide, we are getting additional CSH and we are getting the cementitious properties. So, fly ash, as it is, it is not binding, though it is having this one. You may classify into two kinds of fly ash, one is class F and class C. So, class F is now in silica, calcium hydroxide, calcium oxide content is very, very less, whereas class C, we have calcium oxide also. So, that itself a binding material. Lignite fly ash NLC, if you get, that may act as a binding material, as a replacement of cement. One can think of that. Because I don't have time to do all NLC things. If you young people, you can think of, you can attempt with them. Class C fly ash. So, this is the reaction. CH, calcium hydroxide, is reacting with SiO2 or Al2O3. Siliceous or aluminosiliceous with water, we are getting either CSH or CASH, calcium aluminosilicate hydrate. These things are forming. This way you can give it. This is a postlanic active index. Probably, I, madam, I leave this presentation if they are interested, you can give it. So, this is one. So, precursor material. If at all you want to think of supplementary material, what are all the materials in your mind? What is the materials you can think of? These are all, other is called mineral admixtures. This you can read it, I will give later. Likely to be, likely to be this material can identify. I have given the list exhaustive, it is not exhaustive, we can think of many things. So, fly ads I put first. What, where the industries? If for terms of the sustainable material, if you want to work, you can think of these kind of industries, approach them and take this material. So, I may be interested mostly these three lime sludge. Uh, slag and fly ash. These material, three materials only, I will give some examples and uh, how I am processing the products. I need to come to the lecture first. I am just introducing only. How we are going about? We will see. This is due to their good cementitious properties and postlanic reaction, low heat of hydration, lime consuming. I hope you know what is heat of hydration. I hope. Otherwise, you can go through Shetty book, we read it. 
So now I move on to material utilization. How I am getting the new materials? Billet cement. Yeah. I use two kinds of materials. One is industrial waste such as lime sludge, that is paper and pulp industry waste, and then I calcine it to high temperature. I am getting it CLS. And then silica fume and nano non-conventional material like nano silica. These three materials I were taken for my precursors and I am trying to synthesize billet cement. So it is having low heat hydration, reduction of alite C3S, if you reduce it, that gives a good concrete, CO2 reduction, high reactivity, low energy content, later day strength development. So this is a lime sludge, I received from the paper and pulp industry, it is dumped like this and then this is a structure of as received, this is scanning electron microscope image of LS. You see here one particle I have taken the exponent, this one. So from this I found that this is nothing but calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate that is lime is a parent material for cement, parent material for cement because burning lime we are getting CaO. Like that this also we are getting out of it. When I heating it, when I am heating it here with the oiling exciting is temperature. I am heating that lime sludge, it is coming up to this because it is having a lot of moisture in that, that is getting removed and then there is no the black line, there is no, uh, nothing happened, no mass loss has happened, whereas this stage there is a mass loss, up to 15 to 30 percent is mass loss. What happened, this calcium carbonate, that is what calcite, when they are burning, it is forming into CaO and CO3, carbon dioxide, CO2, carbon dioxide. That red line is peak for carbon dioxide. So what I want to say here is, any material, if you are taking for interest in your study, changing it into different form, you have to process it. Otherwise, in a different form, you have to think of what it contains first, that you should know. Then, using it subsequent, whether it is applicable for us or not. If it is not so, don't waste your time. Go ahead for something, something else. This is what X-ray diffraction. So I am going more talk about X-ray diffraction, scanning electron microscopy, thermogravimetry analysis. These are all the techniques and tools for your identification of the material. So this is X-ray diffraction. You see here, there is LS, lime sludge. It is giving peaks like this. If I am heating it to something, some different temperature, the peaks are shifted. That peaks pertaining to two, that is nothing but calcium oxide. That is our material. Calcium oxide is required for our cement replacement. So this is what this picture is giving. In that, I said CLS, CLS and silica fume and nano silica. These are all peaks we call it as amorphous. Amorphous materials are highly reactive. Whereas crystalline materials, the sharp peak whatever you are seeing is not so reactive. Okay. So these two are very amorphous the peaks, broad peaks from X-ray diffraction and then you can see here the scale is nanometer the nano silica, what you are seeing is an atom silica atom through tunnel uh, transmission electron microscope using this we will get atomic scale we can see the atoms that is what you are seeing here so one industrial product I taken paper and purple industry I studied all I found its characterization this is by X-ray fluorescence. X-ray fluorescence means we will get this. This is LS which is having calcium of this much and moisture is this much. After burn, it has been changed into this much, this way. CLS has formed this way. So there, this SF, whereas it is pure of SF is purely silica and cement is having these properties. What I studied. So this is the value. So calcium oxide is this much, here it is this much. So, I can use this CLS for replacement of cement in place of C3S and it is also having silica. So, with this keep in mind, I have attempted to synthesize billet by different means. It is a flow chart. Three different means I have attempted. I have formed the billet cements, which is alternate, which is reducing this allyl content. I have formed the billet. So, three, three methods I have used. 
and then part of them I have replaced with cement up to 30 percent I have attempted to change okay but strength is coming down at early because below it will give later day strength if I am allowing I mean the things are going on I may get a later day strength higher so that is what the initial study I have published for that I have done it so the ready, however the reduction in temperature I mean strength you can find 30 percent replacement but it is about 45 MPa we can design it for 45 MPa with the replacement of OPC by 30 percent billet. So when after synthesizing whether my billet is reacting and that's what I want to say because billet is later day strength but if I want to make it early strength how does it possible whether I can do some mechanism or what is the, what is the things behind. So I have to analyze critically whatever the material you synthesize critically analyze see here the, this is structure atomic structure of material of billet two three types of synthesis three types I have found three methods and billet is forming uh, it is called uh, we call it as uh, semi quantitative analysis by XRT we get the quantity of cement billets this much quantity so this is about uh, 93 92 89 so this I replaced with that so what way this kind of materials are helping for my early hydration so this is a molecular structure of the billet what I synthesized here is A Jost, this mummy and Berliner these three what happened I have to find the atomic distances between the molecules silica lime and what is the distance between that if I am finding it this is what this happened so silica to oxygen this is a length this is almost similar calcium to oxide atomic length is this much because this one is anion and another one is cation anion and cation you would have studied they are come too close together what will happen it will get easily deplete dissociate that is what is happening when calcium calcium bond you can see 3.625 it's a long distance this is too much 2.8 whereas this is 3.48 then the dissociation is because two cations come, cannot come together they are ripple each other then dissociation is very fast once if you are dissociating calcium that is got react it is getting reacted fast so instead of telling later day strength I can get by using billet early day strength because of nanomaterial property nanomaterial is giving that kind of properties so it is laboratory scale we have attempted many things you can see here this is the cement heat of hydration this is cement heat of hydration and then if I am adding this material billet synthesized that heat of hydration is elevating it indirectly shows early strength gaining directly shows early strength gaining in this picture please note that you can find the workability setting time and strength with this itself itself we can find you can see here this point is initial setting time this is final setting time likewise every material sets very fast then control other materials set very fast this dp what i put is dormant period that is workable period till the time it is in flowable state after that it starts setting and then strength that I will come to that time how do you find the strength with this itself you don't require to go for casting and testing with itself we can find it that I will tell later there are some stories and you move on to geopolymer concrete it's an additional material 100% replacement of cement so so far attempted is um, fly ash only so fly ash is nothing but silicious or aluminum silicious material which they are reacting with earlier I said cement CSH is forming whereas here in geopolymer concrete we have to have additional solution than water because we have to have a sodium hydroxide and sodium silicate solution for geopolymer concrete that is having forming a gel also that gel is called NASH NA SH 
in cement opc the terms what i am using now please keep in mind that the opc what we call it as csh in geopolymer we call it as nash nash otherwise in mineral term we call it as trona or natron trona or natra they are holding the aggregates that gels are holding the aggregates okay this is a formation of your ash because why i showed here is only fly ash i have taken with any oh and no2 sa3 this is sodium silicate adding together with water and forming a binder so that forms a geopolymer this is a geopolymer structure that has been given nicely by this one this paper if you read you get more idea about this so why do we use fly ash alone why don't you think of something different because opc is having csh geopolymer is having already nash do we think of something different why don't we use ggbs that has been attempted in addition to ggbs i have attempted with the lime sludge whatever i said no cls that also i attempted because lime sludge is as costly is very costly is as equal to cement opc cost so we cannot just like that work okay, ggbs cannot be used so we have to think of alternate for ggbs also because we are keeping in mind we want to reduce the cost of anything geopolymer cost also you have to reduce it if you are using ggbs the cost will be escalating okay but purely cement uh, fly ash is not helping a lot because the sodium silicate and sodium hydroxide composition alkali activated solution we require very high molarity so minimum molarity if you want to synthesize we can think of some other material only fly ash won't help so we have to go for ggbs or some other alternative that's an attempt so what i have done ternary blender geopolymers differently you have to think yeah this is the composition this is this is the way of uh, producing this alkali activated solution i have prepared two molarity one is 1 5 and another one 8 molar the people are going for even 32 molar i don't know what is the reason behind so i am attempted only with 5 molar and 8 molar the composition is 50% fly ash 50% ggbs that's why i take it as a control and then i changing the composition ggbs and the cls i attempted this is the design for that as i said already calcium oxide i mean ggbs and co will give csh calcium silicate hydrate at the same time it will give nas because i am putting geopolymer mix so you can see here n m and t this is called trona natron that is nash it's a composition of both which is having csh as well as uh, nash so this you can uh, finding th finding it through excited diffraction okay this uh, of course you have to do it for semi conductive analysis how, how much is the quantity for how much is k that you have to find it this is a sem micrograph of geopolymer whatever i have got done it no? that has been that you know that i had silica alumina <coughs> sodium and calcium so they are coming up increasing so i am increasing the calcium content i am getting it out of here so can the calcium content is keep on increasing i can prove from this that means my materials are reacting the similarly another tool called uh, thermogravimetry mass spectrometry and uh, differential thermogravimetry we can get the reaction kinetics here this up to 200 degree that whatever the hydration things are getting decomposed they are going away fly off beyond that there is no reaction it is going you can see the next picture here up to 200 only the reaction is happening beyond 200 degree centigrade nothing is happened can i claim that geopolymer is good for thermal effect you have to think because it is not nothing happening to geopolymer concrete up beyond the 200 300 degree so when you when you building fires it may go to 800 only problem is the reinforce reinforce material get affected otherwise as such geopolymer concrete will not get affected that is what i have claimed based on this study tenor blender 
binary blended you can attempt whether it is affecting the temperature. High temperature if you go, that depends on the thermal rating, how fast it is burning and how what is the time we can go, we can evacuate the people, that we have to think of. So fire studies also, of course I, I don't know how many of you know that we have a laboratory called Central Building Research Institute in Rurki, they are exceedingly done with the firing, firing of samples, they are doing it, they are doing our facilities. I'll go for that. See what happened, we have to play with the, this one, when silica, silicious aluminous material with respect to the alkali, and similarly elemental analysis like the silica and alumina with the alkali, it is getting increasing, it is getting increasing, what will happen, the strength is reducing, the ratio is increasing, then strength is reducing. If I want to keep the strength as equal to fly ash, what I have to do is play with this. What I have to do? Numerator, if you increase, what will happen? It will come down. Correct? That means molarity increasing. You have to increase the molarity of sodium silicate. That only we can get the on par with the equivalent strength. So this is what I want to play. This is what we have to play. What is the reason? What is the cost behind the strength reduction? If you don't get strength, why you don't get strength? Think. If you don't, if you are getting higher strength, why it is higher strength? What is the reason behind? Even after getting the strength, strength is not the only criteria. You have to think of the durable aspects. Subsequently, workable and then durable. So all these things put together, that is what important things, workability, durability and strength. These three are very important aspects. So we have to play with the material we will forget a complete output. That's important. So, Nano Bio, some interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost coming to the end. Do you agree with me? Concrete is a nano structure. Such a massive concrete, which is also having nano structure. And multi phase composite material. How? See here. The first one is conventional concrete. We are using the size of this much nanometer scale I have put. So this is 100 nanometer, uh, sorry, 1000 nanometer means 1 micron or 10 micron like this. This is a conventional concrete. Whereas if you want to go for high strength and high performance concrete, we are using this one. Silica fume, metagylene and uh, finely ground made ground and other material. Finely grounded. So my particle size we have to reduce it and get it. If you use Nano material, nano silica or whatever it is, we will get a nano engineered concrete. Our one of our division is purely working on nano engineered concrete. Of course, I heard that also something. So, playing with nano. So, concrete is having all the phases. Our CSH, so far I discussed now, that itself a nano material. That itself a nano material. So, two ways we can approach the nano material synthesis either bottom up or top down. Whatever the way you have to do it, you can synthesize it and using it. What is the need? It's an emerging field. You can play with that component level and we are changing the entire properties, engineering properties of concrete that is possible using nanomaterials. Uh, this is the zone, zone I want to talk about. Interfacial transition zone. Head about the ITZ. That's an important zone wherein the gel, CSS gel and concrete, there is a gap. That because I said